space is truly unlimited. With so many possibilities for advancements, it is truly fascinating whenever anything is discovered. You never know what small finding will lead to something big, and what big findings will be revolutionary. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at recent space discoveries. Did our DNA come from space rocks? The building blocks of our DNA have been discovered in space rocks, begging the question, did our DNA come from space rocks? It's possible that cosmic impacts brought the ingredients needed to create life on Earth. DNA is made of four vital ingredients. Nucleobases named adenine, thymine, cysticine and guanine. For years, scientists wondered if meteorites could have brought these ingredients to Earth. However, until now, only adenine and guanine had been detected. Nucleobases come in two forms, called purines and pyrimidines. For a long time, only purines were seen in meteorites, and pyrimidines seemed to be missing in action. The main difference between the two is that purines are made from a hexagonal molecule fused with a pentagonal one, while pyrimidines are smaller and are made from just the hexagonal molecule. Scientists have now been able to find all the purines and pyrimidines that are in DNA and RNA in the meteorites that arrived on Earth. According to the astrochemist who led the study, Yashihiro Oba, the presence of the five primary nucleobases in meteorites may have a contribution to the emergence of genetic functions before the onset of life on the early Earth. The methods used in this study to detect the nucleobases demonstrate the incredible scientific advancements that have been made in recent years. Researchers used techniques that were originally designed for genetic and pharmaceutical research, that are able to detect nucleobases down to the range of parts per trillion. The techniques used were at least 10 to 100 times greater in sensitivity than previous techniques to detect pyrimidines in meteorites. The samples analyzed in this study were from three carbon-rich meteorites that had been previously suspected of having the capability to host chemical reactions that created nucleobases. Murkison, Murray and Tagish Lake meteorites. Although it's still unknown why purines were much more abundant in the meteorites than pyrimidines, one clue could be that purines contain a pentagonal ring called amidazole, while pyrimidines do not. Whatever the reason for this discrepancy, one thing is for certain. This study could be a breakthrough in understanding how life formed on Earth. Fragments that formed the Moon may be buried by the Earth's core. If you were asked to name the first three things that come to mind pertaining to the solar system, it is highly likely that you would mention the Moon as one of them. Have you ever looked out onto the night sky and wondered how the Moon even came to be a part of it? One accepted theory is that the Moon was formed as a result of a collision between a planet that was estimated to be a similar size to Mars and the original and juvenile Earth. Scientists have named that planet Theia, a name stemming from Greek mythology. So where is planet Theia today? As it turns out, Theia may be closer than you think. In fact, in a sense, you may have been living on Theia all along. That's right. Chunks left behind from the impact of the predicted collision long ago may be embedded deep within Earth's core. Such a scenario suggests that Earth and Thea's cores fused into one. Scientists back this claim up by further suggesting that Thea's mantle, which is the layer between the outer crust and inner core, was perhaps denser than that of Earth's, making it more likely to survive the blow and impact of the collision, hence meaning it could have very well survived in the form of leftover chunks in Earth's core to this day. As far as where these leftover remnants of planet Theia are, it is estimated that they lie along Earth's core under modern-day West Africa and the Pacific Ocean. In both regions, the leftover chunks are estimated to measure thousands of kilometers in both length and width. Scientists had originally and still designated those areas as what they refer to as low shear velocity provinces. But with time, they have added on the theory that Thea's remnants may be along those low shear velocity provinces. 
The theory is not entirely solidified and is still relatively up in the air. We may very well have been living on two planets all this time without even knowing. Fomalhaut B turns to dust. One second it's there, and then poof, it's gone. Fomalhaut B, or more formally known as Dagon, is a widely debated candidate exoplanet orbiting the A-type star Fomalhaut. What makes this so interesting is that it is hard to tell what this thing really is. The true nature of Fomalhaut is somewhat of a mystery. It was initially defined as one of the first exoplanets to be directly imaged. It has subsequently been described as a low-mass planet whose surrounding dust cloud is entirely responsible for its detection or debris from a collision of asteroids instead. The initial discovery was made by Hubble in 2005 that saw observations published discussed the structure of Fomalhaut's massive debris belt. But more recently, the headlines don't read Exoplanet Discovery, but instead, Exoplanet apparently disappears in latest Hubble observations. Astronomers found themselves in a bizarre predicament where the planet they were studying completely disappeared while they were studying it. The planet was last seen orbiting the star Fomalhaut just 25 light-years away. HubbleSite.org says that a team of researchers from the University of Arizona believe a full-grown planet never existed in the first place. Instead, they concluded that the Hubble Space Telescope was looking at an expanding cloud of very fine dust particles from two icy bodies that smashed into each other. Hubble came along too late to witness the suspected collision, but may have captured its aftermath. In 2008, the dot that they thought was a planet had seemingly disappeared from sight. By 2014, the dot was completely gone, no dust or anything to even suggest it might have been there. The conclusion between scientists seems to be that this is caused by the planet actually being inside an icy ring encircling the star. However, the so-called planet at this point is simply an expanding debris cloud itself. Space is a mysterious place, and something new is being examined or discovered every day, but this vast unknown will always be somewhat of an unexplained mystery. NASA touches down on asteroid Bennu Asteroids are not simple celestial bodies to engage with. Compared to planets and the size of the universe, they're like tiny atoms in the sky. So, you may be surprised to know that NASA recently touched down on an asteroid, Bennu, and the organization discussed the exciting mission in October of 2020. Bennu is an ancient asteroid that is currently on course more than 700 million miles away from Earth. The asteroid is in good condition, and it gives scientists the chance to see what the solar system was like when it was first formed billions of years in the past. The asteroid could also point towards celestial impacts that may have dropped off materials on Earth. On the 20th of October in 2020, NASA's OSIRIS-REx sample collection mission performed a successful touch-and-go, also known as a tag maneuver. At 1.50 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on that fateful day, NASA's OSIRIS-REx used its high-end thrusters in order to position itself around Bennu's asteroid orbit. Carefully navigating towards the high-speed asteroid, the machine extended the shoulder, elbow, then the wrist of its 11-foot sampling arm. This long arm is named the Touch-and-Go Sample Acquisition Mechanism. After descending around half a mile towards Bennu's surface for four hours, the OSIRIS spacecraft began what it called the checkpoint burn. This maneuver is just one of two that allow the shuttle to reach its target, the sample collection site known as Nightingale. From NASA's data, they believe that the tag event was successful and went as expected, though it will be some time before the team working on the project will be able to confirm how many samples the spacecraft collected. The image of Bennu that we can turn to in order to visualize the asteroid is a composite made from two images taken by the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft. The image depicts Bennu ejecting some kind of particles away from its surface, and the image was produced using cropping, brightness adjustment, as well as contrast editing. 
NASA discovers TIE Fighter Galaxy. Not that long ago, in a galaxy that is very far away, scientists at NASA discovered something very unusual but something very interesting. A dream of every sci-fi lover. Discovered in August of 2020, NASA researchers announced that they had found a galaxy shaped like Darth Vader's TIE Fighter from the Star Wars series. The galaxy, named TXS 0128 plus 554, bears an uncanny resemblance to the personal spacecraft of the film's iconic villain. Located in the Cassiopeia constellation of space, the galaxy is located 500 million light years away from us. The reason the galaxy has such a peculiar shape mostly comes down to what angle researchers can view the galaxy at, and it probably wouldn't look quite like a TIE fighter if you were to view it from another angle. Still, the galaxy is an interesting find nonetheless, and scientists have actually labelled it as an active galaxy, meaning that the galaxy actually emits more light out into space than what all of its stars are capable of, some of which has captured the interest of scientists. The excess light seems to be produced by gamma rays from a supermassive black hole at the galaxy's centre. This explains the section that is thinner in the middle. The wings of the TIE fighter have an explanation too, as they are actually large clouds of gas and dust built up and heated by gravity and friction. According to communication network coverage on the Star Wars-related spotting, the TIE Fighter Galaxy has a supermassive black hole at its centre and is blasting out enormous amounts of energy. This is not the first strangely shaped galaxy that scientists have spotted. As technology and measuring instruments have become better equipped at recording far-off celestial bodies, scientists have discovered a galaxy shaped like a boomerang, one shaped like a sombrero, and even one shaped like a donut. The galaxy seen from far away will be forever remembered due to its unique shape and memorable name. 486958 Arakoth 486958 Arakoth is the most distant object ever explored and is also known as 2014 MU69 by its original destination. It was discovered on the 26th of June 2014. In the Algonquian language, Arakoth means sky. New Horizons principal investigator Alan Stern claimed the name Arakoth reflects the inspiration of looking to the skies and wondering about the stars and worlds beyond our own. It is situated in the Kuiper Belt, which is relatively similar to an asteroid belt but much larger in size. Many objects wavering within the Kuiper Belt are well preserved and frozen, similar to a time capsule, giving us an inside look on what the outer solar system was like after its initial conception. These small objects within the Kuiper Belt have been mostly unchanged for over 4 billion years. The Kuiper Belt is known as the solar system's third zone. Arakoth is also a trans-Neptunian object. Trans-Neptunian objects are dwarf or minor-sized planets in our solar system that are at a greater distance than Neptune. Arakoth checks in at 4 billion years old. It was discovered by Mark Buey using the Hubble Space Telescope. The observation was conducted by NASA's New Horizons science team. Mark Buey announced data from Arakoth has given us an indication about the formation of planets and our cosmic origins. We believe this ancient body, composed of two distinct lobes that merged into one entity, may harbour answers that contribute to our understanding of the origin of life on Earth. Arakoth has a red tint that is actually more red than Pluto making it the reddest outer solar system object discovered to date. Arakoth's amorphous shape is described by NASA as a snowman that's been partially flattened. It is two objects merged into one and is about 35 kilometers long, 20 kilometers wide and 10 kilometers thick. Arakoth is the furthest object that has been explored by humans. It was identified when the probe was 6.4 billion kilometers from Earth and it is an estimated 6.6 .6 billion kilometers away from Earth. It takes Arakoth around 293 years to orbit the Sun once. Arakoth could give scientists answers that they have been searching decades for. There are two situations scientists have debated concerning planetary formation. The first scenario is hierarchical accretion where small grains and pebbles bounce around, occasionally hitting into each other with enough force to stick 
making bigger and bigger objects. Eventually, over the course of millions of years, these planets would have compiled matter from random, forceful collisions. The second scenario is cloud collapse, where certain regions of the nebula had a higher density of particles and these clumps were drawn towards each other until they spontaneously gravitationally collapsed. Unlike the forceful nature of hierarchical accretion collisions, cloud collapse collisions were leading to the planets being born. Dr. Alan Stern, the principal investigator of the New Horizons team, said, The imagery shows no signs of violence, no fractures. The two lobes don't look smashed together leaving room to certify the cloud collapse theory. The discovery of Arakoth has led to a possible revolutionary breakthrough. A planetary scientist at Washington University in St. Louis explained, It tells us some profound truths about our solar system. It's a remarkable world that's told us a remarkable story. The information exposed left the New Horizons team confused, debating if Arakoth was more significant than the probe's first encounter with Pluto in 2015. It will be exciting to see where the discovery of 486958 Arakoth will take us, and how it will help us understand the astonishing complexity and inner workings of outer space. But what do you make of these new discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.